if you like chewy, drab and floppy asparagus that looks pale and tasteless, this is the wrong video for you. However, if you like crisp and tender asparagus that looks vibrant and tastes delicious, you're in the right place. Keep watching. Today we're going to discuss asparagus. This video will be split into four parts. First we'll talk about asparagus, then we'll discuss how to prepare and cook it, after that we'll talk about other ingredients and flavours that go well with it, and finally, as always, we'll cover how to present it. I'll be demonstrating and talking about these things using a couple of asparagus amuse-bouche or bite-sized appetisers. Described as being one of the hardest vegetable tastes to describe, asparagus season has started here in New Zealand and I was so excited I had to get some. This is the asparagus I have today. They have nice firm stems and purplish tips. You can see there are a variety of thicknesses. The thicker ones have just had more time to grow and get bigger. They are more fibrous and are better suited to grilling or roasting. These thinner ones are perfect to eat raw. Asparagus grows straight out of the ground, starting with the spear and the whole thing is edible. However, the bottom end can be a bit woody and bitter. Ideally, we want to trim this bit off and the best way to do this is to snap off the end where it naturally wants to break. Use this point as a guide for how much to trim off the rest of the bunch. If you ever go to a fine dining restaurant and order a dish with asparagus, sometimes they sharpen the end with a pencil sharpener to get it looking crisp and sharp. I'll talk more about that later on. Now it's time to talk about how to prepare and cook our asparagus. There are lots of different ways to do this. You could eat them raw, fry them, grill them or sauté them, but the most common way is to boil them. The biggest mistake I see is when people boil them for too long. They'll end up all mushy and chewy. All you need to do is briefly blanch them. So let's do that now. I've got my boiling water and iced water ready. Once the water is boiling, Simply drop the asparagus in and let it blanch for two to three minutes, depending on how thick your spears are. Then unless you're eating these straight away, drop them straight into the bowl of iced water. This is called shocking. It immediately stops the cooking process and results in that vibrant green colour and crispness. If you don't do this or boil your spears for too long, they'll end up a dull green with a mushy texture. It will exaggerate with time, so we'll come back to these in a bit, which will be like the time between cooking and eating. Another way you can eat asparagus is as an asparagus roll. I often used to make these for conferences and events. The problem is the spearhead is only on one end, so it doesn't look great from both sides. I'll show you how we did it. First, blanch the asparagus to keep it crisp. Then split the spears in half lengthways in preparation for topping and tailing them. Next we'll prepare the bread by removing the crusts. You don't have to do this, but it does look better. I like to use spreadable cream cheese as my base, although it's not very spreadable today, is it? You could use butter or even hummus if you wanted to keep it vegan. Now we can add the spears, topping and tailing them with a little overhang. Don't forget to salt and pepper them before rolling them up tightly. We'll come back and plate these soon. You can also saute or grill asparagus. Asparagus cooked correctly is delicious on its own, but when you add bacon to the mix, it becomes an irresistible culinary combination. Try it and see what I mean. These don't need to be blanched. Grill them until the bacon is cooked. It's best to get thinner bacon that'll cook faster so the asparagus doesn't overcook. While those are in the oven, I'll talk more about using a pencil sharpener to get the end nice and crisp. It's as easy as it sounds. This is a bigger pencil sharpener, so it fits the spears quite easily. Obviously, you need to make sure it's very clean or it's one that you only ever use for food. Sometimes fine dining restaurants do this to add to the presentation. It does look cool, but it's a bit wasteful unless you're planning to use the offcuts. Here's our grilled asparagus and bacon bundles. The asparagus is done, 
but I'd like a little more colour on the bacon, so I'll just help it along with a gas torch. Have you ever been in a restaurant when a chef gets the fire going? <laughs> That's all for show! Ok, let's talk about some other ingredients and flavours that go well with asparagus. Asparagus is a very versatile spring vegetable and is delicious with lots of different pairings. Here I'm preparing toasted breadcrumbs and walnuts for a raw asparagus salad. Asparagus and hollandaise sauce is a popular combination. It also goes well with eggs and bacon or other cured meats. Or if you're daring, try it with strawberries and balsamic vinegar. These thin spears are perfect for eating raw. I'm slicing them on a slight angle as I think it looks better that way and since they're for a small amuse-bouche or appetizer, I'm keeping them small. I'll add in some of our toasted breadcrumbs and walnuts, some red pepper flakes, grated parmesan cheese, lemon zest, a good squeeze of lemon juice, a grind of salt and some olive oil. This is so simple but so delicious. Such a perfect spring salad. Before we get into talking about presenting asparagus, I'd like to introduce myself in case you're new here. Welcome, I'm Taryn. I like making food fun, delicious and visually appealing. We eat with our eyes first, so food presentation is so important. And it's easier than you think. If that's what you're into, remember to subscribe for lots of tips and ideas. Ok, let's talk about presenting our asparagus amuse bouche or appetizers. We'll start with the asparagus rolls. I'm going to cut these in half to create petite sized portions. I'm keeping them in their pairs with the bread edges all facing the same way. Now when we've cut the asparagus rolls in half, both ends have some of the spear head. Ok, let's plate our asparagus in bacon bundles. They look pretty good just like this. But do you know what's even better? Dipping them into some garlic aioli or blue cheese dip. Today I have these shot glasses to use and I'm going to put some aioli in the bottom for dipping. I've thinned it down a little with some milk, otherwise it's really too thick to dip. I've put the aioli in a piping bag so I can get it in the glass without messing on the sides. Then I can sit the asparagus bundle over the top with a toothpick. I'm sure your guests would love this delicious spring appetizer. What a tasty little treat it would be. Let's plate up the asparagus salad. I'll put some onto these ceramic spoons. I have to be careful to keep it all on the spoons without any bits sticking out too far over the edge. To finish it off, I'm just going to add a little more of our toasted crumbs. Remember when eating raw asparagus, it's best served immediately after it's prepared. Otherwise it can go limp and soggy. All of these ideas would make great amuse-bouche or appetizer ideas. Besides these asparagus rolls, I also used to make sandwich wraps for conferences and events. If you want to see how we made those, check out this video here. And I nearly forgot. Here's the asparagus that we blanched and the asparagus that we boiled. Can you see how with a bit of waiting time, the blanched asparagus looks so much more vibrant and appealing. Happy asparagusing! <laughs> 